I know I should be glad we made it this far. But if we don't find the Apocrypha Generator soon... Exactly. The fight against Egil's not going to be easy with the Monado in its current state. And we don't know what kind of toll it'll take on Shulk's body. We have to destroy that generator. It's up ahead. Shulk? There's a strong energy coming from up ahead. That has to be it. Really? Yes. Then this is it. Egil's gonna be scrap metal when I'm through with him. Hereupon, Ricky is ready to bounce some heads. Hello there, everybody. This is Seawalt the Plan One here, and welcome back to more Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles. So, last time, we flew into the Makanis while the Makanis was in the process of awakening, and we are here at the Ventilation Conduit, where Junks is now parked, ready to depart at any time should we need further preparations. So today, Ricky was only here for the intro because, at Junks, there is one thing that is opened up to you now that you're in this said location. Well, if the music is any indication, you should know where we are, but I'm just going to leave it all in the open in case you don't remember. But anyway, Junkstaff, the Machina who is named that because her parents hated, hated her, shall have a quest for you. You seem really talkative. I heard from Vanea that there's a weapon production machine here. Do you know what came to mind when I heard that? Please tell me more. Yes, indeed. Tell us more. Fiora, Ricky have problems too? <laughs> we'll sit and talk later, okay? Aw, that's cute. Stop pretending you don't know what I'm getting at. You can You can make a weapon, an extraordinarily strong one. The materials are all ready. Thank God. Just take them to the machine and you can make a weapon for Fiora. I love talking in the third person. So, the new weapon will certainly come in handy. You're so considerate. Thank you for keeping me in mind. That's okay. No need to thank me. Thank the game. It's the least I can do. New weapon for Fiora. This is a time quest. And very important that you do not skip this at all. Unlike me in my first playthrough. So... We already have all the weapon materials that we need due to that item called the weapon material. So, why don't we just go ahead and do it up. Let's mash it up. Bigger, better, better, bigger. <laughs> Actually, I think I'll need Charla. I'm too scared. Okay, so, anyway. If the music is indeed of any indication as we go through here, the music should sound very familiar to you. That is because we are actually back at the central factory. Remember back in part 70 when I mentioned there was a certain, you know, unique monster that I didn't want to take care of yet because, well, you know, it was too high leveled? Well, now we are pretty much at the proper level to take it on, pretty much. So, we are up here at the central factory to, well, not only go to the Apocrypha generator, which is right over there, but... We're here because, look down there. That is all of the central factory that we went through. Those rings over there, that's the Agneritha transporter. It just really goes to show you, once again, that, you know, you get a sense of scale in the progress. You get a sense of progress. We really have come a long way ever since Colony 9. And now we're here possibly saving the world. Here we are at the Bridge to Apocrypha. We can either go to the right to commence the story, or we can go to the left. Because, well, by doing so, going to the left, we have this transporter right here. We can clearly see the Apocrypha generator up there. That's that structure, actually, that I alluded to about in Part 71. But now we can actually go there. But, first things first, there's a Fire Aether gear here. And, over here, is the Barrier Control Panel. You can now freely go ahead and go back to the Apocrypha Generator whenever we wish. But, speaking of that, if you're going to do all the things that you're going to do in the Central Factory that you forgot, like Unique Monsters, Collectopedia, and anything else, 
Skip traveling is unfortunately disabled, so you're gonna have to huff it everywhere you go. But anyway, now it's time to set out what I wanted to do, which is take on Majestic Mordred. Our party is pretty much at level 70, so we should be fine for this. So I'm gonna actually wait for him to do it. Okay, we're good. All right, so pretty much that trick I told you about with uh, Mischievous Nibirius pretty much works here as well. Like, attacking it from the top will cause double the damage. And once again, there is indeed no shame of doing this method. You can do this method anytime you wish. Because Fortress Unit mech on are just that damn tough. Honestly. Honest and for truly. Like, look at how much we've gone through already. Like, seriously. And, you know, uh, its physical attacks can't even do a thing. Like, not even its talent arts can't even do a thing to us. But, unfortunately, uh, Majestic Mordred still has that one thing that all Fortress Units have. The Black Matter attack. So, there's that. Also, yeah, Titan Laser can hurt very much. So, just in case you decide to do another Talon Arm, I'm gonna go ahead and do a shield. And then, oh god, uh, what are you gonna do? Black Matter again, okay. Oh, great, and now it's Crazed. Like, okay, that's the thing. Like, Crazed is like sort of this ability that grants immunity to topple, right? Well, wouldn't you think to do that? Wouldn't you ever think to, like, you know... Uh, do all that uh, can I one shot? Okay, good. Alright, do it. Do it good. Yeah! There it is. Okay, back to Craze. Like, Craze is like an aura that grants immunity to topple, but I don't get that. But I don't, like, but I don't get that for Fortress Unit Mechon. Or for Fortress Unit, or, yeah, Fortress Unit Mechon. I don't get that at all. But what I do get is that this guy is about to use Titan Laser 7. And also, that's kind of weird, like, this guy has two Titan Laser Talon Arts? Really? Like, it's weird, but okay. I guess, I guess we'll go with that. Either way, it's done. We have taken care of Majestic Mordred, and that should effectively be the last unique monster of the Central Factory. So, we're pretty much all good. In a way. Oh, two advanced art books! Holy crap! Okay, good, I'm recording. <laughs> oh my god. That is amazing. Like, Tempest Kick, I'll, I'll occasionally use. Lock On, I never use, but oh my god. Like I said, advanced art books are advanced art books. I am not complaining in the very slightest about all of that. So, yeah. I will take that. Take that for what you will. Indeed. Okay, so, we are going to make that new weapon for Fiora now, for next off. So, I like to go, I like to take this time to briefly recap what's going on from my perspective. So, after, you know, Jade Face and Agneritha, I lost to, like, a thousand times, and me getting so close at one time, I nearly threw my controller. I was, it was all worth it. It was all pretty much worth it in the end, because, like, you know... Jade Face is all happy now and whatever. He's resting and all that jazz. But then we get to Eggill and I'm just like, please let there be a resolution. And then it's like, nope. Boss fight. <laughs> like, I knew we were going to fight Eggill at some point. I mean, he's the main dude. He's the one setting up for revenge. He could have been like Shulk in many ways. Cared too much for his people, you know? Except Shulk didn't go on that path. Eggill decided to go on that path. Well, for life, pretty much. And, yeah, that fight was pretty much amazing in that regard. But then, but then, we get to the awakening of the Makanas, and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> like, the first time playing it through, like, I don't know, something about, like, the way that scene was directed. Like, you know, you wouldn't think that the Makanas would ever... Like, you know, reawaken after all this time. And, and awaken in such a way that it's like, you know, it's not like an old, old, like, Titan God thing, even though it's technically asleep. I honestly thought it would be all like slow moving, like an awakening type of thing, you know? 
but instead it's just like roar and it's like shulk and just ugh and I still get chills every time I I see that cutscene just that is one of my favorite cutscenes for a reason just like the way it's directed and the way that it's all built up it's just amazing like the game was already amazing before but now it's start for me it was getting into like legendary territory like seriously and especially considering all these characters like this is like the one RPG that like well out of like a few that makes you care for like every single character because you love Callian because he's like because he goes out on the front lines to help out the soldiers uh, you love Alvis because he's just so mysterious and all that stuff. Plus, he's got a sexy voice. <laughs> um, you love Dixon because he, he freaking knows everything, man. He's been everywhere. He's seen everything. And it's just like, oh my god. Like, all these characters are just so great. Even the side characters are so good. Oh, <sighs> I'm. I love this game. <laughs> but anyway. Now that that's done... We have the War Blades for Fiora. That is one of her new weapons, and we are going to equip that. Decided to give up the Arts Heal, but look at those! Blades of Light, dude. That weapon is absolutely insane, man. It may cut Fiora's defenses, but it's it's worth it. It's really it really is worth it just to get the War Blades for Fiora, basically. It's all worth it in the end. But anyway, that's not actually all that we can do. I want to actually head back to where we first entered the Central Factory. If you recall, it's way over there. So, I shall indeed meet you guys way over there. So, over here. You can see that the entrance to Makana's Field from this place is blocked off. Even if you somehow trick out the game to, like, go over there... You can't actually go down there because the elevator is down there, and apparently it's daytime. So, this just further proves that Makana's Field is completely, completely cut off from you. So, no more Makana's Field, no more awesome atmospheric mechanical music, none of that. Ever again. And finally, there is one more bit of business that we can do here. So... If you real if you recognize this location, this is the Agneritha transporter. Why don't we see if we can actually go there? And indeed, we can. Uh game designers or writers, uh you're making the characters seem like Agneritha was destroyed. Uh bullshit. It's not destroyed. It's not. You see, when the Makanis awakened, everyone expects the Makanis capital to be completely destroyed. Because they keep saying that. But nope. Not sure if this is an oversight or not, but... From here, you can actually enter Agniritha. Well, skip traveling here is disabled, obviously. But, you can indeed go back to Agniritha at this point in time. So... If there's any unique monster that you need to hunt, if there's any quests that you left unfinished, if there's any Collectopedia items that you need to hunt down, or if you just like the scenery here, this is your one and only opportunity to go back to Agneritha and do all that. If you proceed the story further as much as a few more cutscenes, Agneritha will be lost to you for good. So, again, if there's anything that you need to do in Agniritha, quests or otherwise, do so at this point now. The very last thing to note, this is the one and only time where you can actually see the Mainit Shrine outside of the battle with Egil. Looks very grand up close, wouldn't you say? Indeed it does. So, um, what... You realize that you can actually not go through this wall, unfortunately. You know, the wall that Ego went through in order to get to the core? Well, you can't actually go through there. Kind of sad, but whatever. It's, it's, a, it's story. It's for story purposes. So, 
You might as well get one last look at Echneritha because this is the very last set we're going to see. I I just gotta say, I freaking love Agneritha. I love the atmosphere. I kind of don't appreciate some of the quests, though. But its backstory and just all the other stuff having to do with it really makes me appreciate Agneritha as a, as a location in this world. Just, I love Agneritha. It's great. The music is, is so good, too. Anyway... Let's head back to the Apocrypha Generator. And with all that done, we have now seen whatever else that the Central Factory had to offer. We went back to Agneritha, and we are now prepared to go further over there to the Apocrypha Generator. Let's destroy that thing! It's just as I thought. The Monado feels the same as it did before the Apocrypha took effect. No. It feels even more powerful. The Bionis Monado and this Monado, they have to be connected somehow. Because you aren't here, not anymore. Why am I remembering that dream? Why now? <sighs> Without the power, I can't stop Egil. I have to concentrate. All I have to think about is how to stop the Mechonis. If the Monado does bring about the end, then I know what to do. Fiora! Shulk, what were you thinking about? Uh, uh, nothing. So... It's like that, is it? Really, it's nothing. Listen, Shulk. If it's too hard for you to handle on your own, talk to me. Huh? Fiora... You can tell any of the others as well. We're all here for you. Don't forget that. You're right. You're here for me. Of course. And don't overdo it, okay? We all saw what happened. Is your arm okay? Yeah. It's not bad. I'll live. Oi! You two! Is something up? No! It's nothing! Come on! Mm -hmm. Shulk... You can... <sighs> okay. I am incredibly sadistic. But, oh my god. When I first saw that cutscene, I was like, Shulk and Fiora wins. <laughs> Team Shulk and Fiora forever, but at the same time, freaking Melia, dude. Freaking Melia, ugh. You gotta feel bad for her, man. Uh, but anyway, we're here at the Apocrypha Generator. Let's do this. This... Machine? Is this? Yes. The Apocrypha Generator. Yeah. Let's trash the thing. We take this out and it's plain sailing for Shulk. It should be. It is a miracle that you have been able to use the Monado at all. Hear that? <sighs> Are you really alright? Yeah. I'm... fine. Venea, we need to find Egil. The control core is directly above. It is not far. Wait! It's moving! No! We're too late! You mean... The Mechonis functions have been restored! No! It can't be! Yes! You puny pests are too late! has struck. Not good. I think it must have hit somewhere on Bionis. 
No. no. Move out! Don't forget, we've still got a job to do. Right. What? With shield barrier starting off the fight, let's take out the Apocrypha Generator. So, the reason why I switched to Melia because, well, let's let Shulk sit out of this. Why not? I mean, he's got enough crap to deal with with the Monado as it is, so might as well let him sit out of this fight in terms with Melia and all that stuff. So let's let Melia take the charge for once. But unfortunately, well, here's the thing though. Uh, I don't really have a sort of a daze in mind. Well, technically Fiora can daze because this is indeed a mech on. So, yeah, it can daze, but, well, yeah, you'll see it. But anyway, despite being the Apocrypha Generator and being the big reason why, you know, the Monado hasn't been functioning properly while on Makonis, this is really kind of sort of a basic boss fight. Like, honestly, honestly, really the only thing that it does, like, really sort of new is, like, it's Talon Art. And even then, I don't really think that we can see it. Maybe we can see it, actually. If we get the chance to, but, eh, whatever. We got a chain attack built up, so let us do it. Come on, finish up your quote, finish up your quote. There we go. Great laser. So that will induce confusion, I think. So anyway, let's do it. Talon art. And then we do the final cross. Okay, Fiora doesn't say it like that, but look at that. 8,000 damage per hit. God damn. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any sort of thing. You know what? Let's do it. Burninating the people. Yeah, we didn't get the chain type that we wanted, but eh, it's okay. It's okay. At least we can do damage over time. This battle's been going way, way actually smoother than I originally intended. Holy crap. Because, you know, Shulk is my preferred character, not really necessarily Melia, but Melia's good. We got another chain attack build up already. We can finish this off in one other chain attack. So, let's do it. And with Fiora's final cross, it should finish it off. Chew on that, Apoka, whatever. We did it, Shulk. Shulk? Oi! Whoa! What's happened to the Monado? It must have changed just as the generator was destroyed. It's amazing! Now we're talking. Next up, Egil! Can you go on? Me? I'm alright. Come on, we have to stop Egil. Back on track. Just like I said, the kid'll come through. Naturally, everything is falling into place. Heh, <laughs> you can say that again. But only as long as we remain within the margins of fate, I know not how things will proceed from this point. Shulk gets a brand new Monado art. Monado Cyclone. Oh, ho, ho. again, Shulk getting a Monado art is a pretty damn big deal. Monado Cyclone is an art that attacks in a circle that can do topple. So now Shulk can break, topple, and daze. That is amazing. But unfortunately, uh, well, actually. Actually, I can indeed uh, go ahead and upgrade some of Fiora's arts here because, well, we did receive art books for her, so why not? Uh, let's upgrade Spear Break to his or Spear Blade to as high as it can go, because you know, stuff. <coughs> uh, basically, this this last part is just gonna be menus from this point onward, basically. 
Because, well, I want this next part to be perfect. I, I gotta do a little bit of prep work for this one. Like, even though it's coming out tomorrow, I gotta do a lot of prep work for this one. This one's gotta be good. It's gotta be clean. It's gotta be... Awesome-matic. <laughs> awesome-matic, okay? I guess... I guess I can... I guess I can fund that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't have any sort of arts that I want to level up with people. Shoot. Well, I guess we gotta go on to skills, actually. Just to see if anyone's maxed out on their skill trees. Uh, no one's maxed out on their skill trees. Nor do I ha want new skill links. Next time on Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles, we go to the core. See you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.